For the ECB team, and today we're going to talk about Eurovision 2024. Let's get started. Let's get started. Let's get started. So this time we'll take a deep dive into semifinal two. 16 countries will compete in semifinal two, and in this video we'll try to predict which, which of them will qualify for the grand final. We are three members of the ECB team here, and of course we have different opinions. So let's see on which one of them we agree and which one we don't agree. Just a important disclaimer, this is the prediction before the rehearsal starts. So everything can change actually in a week from now, right? Cool. So yes. having the list of 16 countries competing in semifinal two, let's review them quickly. We have Malta, Albania, Greece, Switzerland, Czechia, Austria, Denmark, Armenia, Latvia, San Marino, Georgia, Belgium, Estonia, Israel, Norway, and the Netherlands closing that semi. So in general, I just think, at least in my opinion, that this semi is stronger it's, as far as I see it. And we might lose some very good songs, unfortunately, but that's the nature of Eurovision, I guess. So out of these 16 countries, we have agreed on eight qualifiers, eight countries that each one of us thought will qualify. Actually, that's huge. So let's start by reviewing those countries quickly. The first country we all agree about is actually Estonia in a random order, of course. So, George, please tell us, why do you think Estonia is in? Well, I personally don't like the Estonian entry this year. I find it one of the weak, um, funky, or I don't want to say troll entries, but I think it has gained the attention of uh, viewers it, already. They are known because of the message of the song and i think it will appeal to the televote because it's a televote magnet let's not lie <laughs> vani why do you think estonia is in uh well i initially thought that this was going to be a shock non qualifier but then i i insist on being more like a qualifier because i mean this song is pretty much what uh, people like and we don't really have that many songs in the semifinal. I also think that Belgium and Israel are two songs that are really slow. And Estonia will definitely pop up like, wow, we have party here. And they will like it. So I do think so. I do think uh, Estonia will actually make it. Not very comfortably, but they'll make it. Mm -hmm. So I will talk about it shortly as well. For me, it was one of the hard decisions to decide whether Estonia is in or out. For me, it's a borderline. On taste aspects, for me, it should be out, unfortunately, and I'm sorry about that. But regarding prediction, that's why we're here. I think it will, I think there are something like three or four countries who fight for additional two spots and Estonia is one of them. For example, Denmark, I think also like they, the both of them, I think, fight for the same spot, although the songs are really different, have nothing in common. But, you know, speaking about running order, I actually think the running order of Estonia is one of the worst because they are surrounded by a lot of kind of, uh, at least on the paper, very strong uh, acts this year. Belgium, there is a hype about him. Israel, yeah. Norway and the Netherlands, all these in the sequence. So I'm not sure it's the best running order they could have wish for but yeah i think because the song is so different and has some basics of a joke entry sorry not sorry it might help them in a semi-final based on televote only what happened in final will be a different story around okay so this is the first one of the countries another one where again in a very random order will be switzerland so why do you think switzerland is in vani I just don't think Switzerland is in. I think it's going to be the top five of the semifinal, maybe even top three, who knows? Because it's a very different song, has so many genres. Yeah, the vocals are amazing. Uh there is also the the confusing non-binary identity, which will grab people, I think. And also, especially people from the northern countries will love that. I don't know. And there are not that many. I think in the first semi, he would win the semifinal. But uh, I think this one is like very uh, definite qualifier. Well, I don't know. I can't say anything else. <laughs> it's definite for me. Yeah, for me, almost the same. He also, They also sorry, proved that they know how to sing live. 
I think in all pre parties it was perfect as far as I have watched and listened. Uh, I know the team behind Switzerland preparing something very huge for the staging, according to rumors again, nothing official. And also I think the Ryan Gordier is really on their side because Switzerland is the first half of semifinal two. And basically we have only female vocalists there. Is the also is the only non-female vocalist. So I think that sequence will make him stand out. And there are no acts to be canceling that one. Also not on the genre aspects. Yes, I think whooping all those things together probably will help it to be pushed through easily. And yeah, I can see Switzerland in the top three of the semi, actually. Uh, George, please tell us quickly what you think Switzerland is in. Um, what's there not to love about Switzerland? For me, it's winning material already of the whole competition. And I think it will grab the attention of the televote very much. <laughs> Great. The third country we all agreed on is Israel. We think Israel is going to make it to the final. So I will start. Um, I think there are a few ballads this year, also a few female ballads. I think Eden is a great vocalist. We all know there is a, um, kind of a lot of comments going about the participation of Israel. But I, I think, you know, sometimes when you, when you talk about something a lot, it can be for a bad. So I think it will create a hype to make even people to an urge to vote even more. And yeah, also I can see a reason why she will score it because Eden has proved during all the season of The Rising Star that she is one of the best vocalists. Song is exciting. Uh, and I think, you know, between all the mess and quirky and upbeat songs, some people will want something calm to be drowning. And I think this is a contender. Also running order, it's after uh, Estonia and basically Italy as well, ultimate qualifier, but anyway. And thereafter we have Norway, which is a rock, not a silent song though, and the Netherlands, which is everything but not silent. So I think like the allocation draw also really helps here. Also 14 is one of the best allocation draw in general. It's a spot that usually countries uh, actually sail through. Uh, George, what do you think Israel is in? Well, I think that the fact that it's a half, the second half is full of a bit songs with three exceptions out of the eight, it's less than 50%. Also, um, out of the three, mostly Don's and Eden is one that has gained attention, unlike um, Latvia. And also, she's a great performer, like you said in the Rising Star episodes, something that Musti is liking so far based on the pre-parties. So I think she has a really good shot. And also, the, as I said, the running order will make it stand out a lot. Vani, why do you think Israel going to qualify? First of all, I'd like to address, uh, because I see a lot of comments being like, still like Israel has no chance to qualify, etc. Uh, but, well, I think we have a magical song there. It stands out. It's the only female ballad in the semi-final, I think. Yeah, we have Serbia and Portugal in the other semi-final, so we have Israel there. Uh, also, I don't think lo lo normal voters, local people, will care about non-musical criteria, uh, I think. And this song fulfills almost everything. It's also very calm, as you all said before. And I think people need a calm break in the final between all this fuss. And I really, I do, I do see some televote potential in that ballad, unlike the rest of the ballads we have. I think this, this could be one ballad that magnets people for me. Yes. Awesome. So moving from one blue and white to another blue and white, because the next card we all agree on is Greece. So ring the beat on and Vani, it's your turn now. Tell us why do you think Greece is a certain qualifier? Uh, because it will be a moment in Eurovision. Uh, I don't know. It's something like I ex I can even expect her to win the semifinal. Because, or the Netherlands or her. Uh, because... It's just too iconic. Mm. <laughs> I think it's definitely it's what Greece is nowadays, and people will definitely see the Greek culture. And I think people love Greek culture in general, even from other countries. And 
he's an amazing artist, full of experience, full of passion. And it's a phenomenon. I do think this is a contender to win the semi-final. And I'm not saying it because I'm from Greece, of course. I'm saying it objectively. George, why do you think Marina Sati is sailing for the final? Well, I'm one of the exceptions uh, that believe uh, that Switzerland and Greece being together will help them both. Like two great songs back to back. I think it will help, actually. Um, also, Marina can deliver on stage. I have seen her live performance twice uh, back in 2022 and in this year with her entry Zari in the party of the Greek broadcaster. She is amazing. She has the energy, the talent. Uh, the song is a televote pleaser because people, yes, expect the Greek culture in Eurovision every year. So we have it after lots of years. Um, and also it's one of the potential top 10, uh, according to the odds for the final. And also, um, a lot in a lot of people in your team are experienced professionals, which say something. So they will prepare something amazing. Yeah, so I agree with both of you. Marina is a professional performer. We have seen it in YouTube or whatever. Uh, the song is unique, ethnic, but also has a lot of modern. I think it's one of the most modern songs this year. Like, you know, it has some urban pop, some ethnic vibes. And it has a lot of staging potential. I just hope it won't be overacted because this is the the dangerous with that kind of acts. But I'm sure that strong team behind her will help it out. Cool. So that's why I think we sit in. Moving on to another certain qualifier. This is no way. Um, yeah, we all agreed about that one. Uh, so yeah, I think the um, vocals of the lead singer stand out. Some people might find it shouty, okay, but there are not people who won't and we'll vote, we'll vote for that one. I think also running order is excellent. It's almost closing the semifinal. There is all, only, only the Netherlands afterwards. Um, yeah, something like like it's, like the, she puts a spell on the listener and the watcher, the, the lead singer. And at least from what we have seen in from the Melody Grand Prix, the scenic is really promising, you know, with all those water effects and the spinning platform. And she actually could have seen almost perfectly while spinning on that platform. So it can tell you there is something good here. Um, yeah, also I want to add that Norway usually do well with televoting, at least in the recent years. So working all those things together, I think it's a safe choice. Vani, what do you think Norway is in? Because uh, I think the song is definitely going to attract uh, votes from all ages, actually. Uh, I think this is one of the few songs of the semi-final would manage this. And this is exceptional. I've said before, my opinion, like, for me, it's the best song this year. I've said it, I said it in the, the specific video of Norway. And uh, yeah, uh, I just I don't have anything else to say much. Like, if this one misses the final, I think it will be the biggest robbery in Eurovision. But I don't think it, there's a chance of happening. I mean, this will also be like in the top five of the semifinal, I think. Yeah, could be. Uh, George, why do you think Norway is in? Well, Norway is a stronger tender, always in the televote, at least the last 10 years. Um, they also combine folklore elements rock metal elements both of them have big fans the audience love entries like that also as i have said before the live performance is even better than the studio version you can enjoy the energy this group is giving especially when she's singing the high notes it's like magic like a dark fairy I agree. it's actually giving you know the vibes like a little maleficent or an evil queen of, of a fairy tale. Yeah, that's right. Okay, moving on to the sixth qualifier we all agreed about. This is the Netherlands. So, yeah, he actually closes the semifinal. I think we have all seen the song went viral. I think out of the of the Dutch charts as well, like in general. 
it leads the YouTube uh, number of views. Also in Spotify, it's quite strong. And yeah, I think it's kind of a, it's a catchy song. Not for everyone, though. I must confess, I still haven't like uh, discovered it fully in the matter of taste. But I can see why it might appeal to some people. Uh, staging going to be something huge, they promise. But let's see together in uh, something like a week from now. Um, yeah, I also think many people would like the message of unity of even I don't know people from France will be happy to that their their city or the country is mentioned there, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I think it's kind of a trick, but a good trick. Uh, but yeah, there is nothing similar to that one. I think by the way, it might steal some of the votes of Estonia because both of them are kind of the, on the same uh, kind of genre, more or less. Although Sony has some ethnic vibes, but yeah. But I think the, the Netherlands like winning that battle, first of all, based on the running order, you know, also closing semifinal is almost a guarantee qualifying. So warping all the teams together, I think Use Klein is in the final as well. George, why do you think the Netherlands is in? Um, first of all, I think like that the Netherlands or Greece, as Vanny said, are the winners of the semifinal one of the potential winners. Um, his energy, the way he can connect to the people, even with the song, more funky, a bit like that, and make them emotional. And the emotional part in the end, which he always uses, and I think he will bring it on stage, is amazing. Like, when I first listened to the song, I got confused, but it you can't help it but have it in your head, rent-free. It's um, really, I don't know, Fantastic. It's atmospheric in the way of fun, of course. Uh, there is something that makes you want to dance, party, and that's what Eurovision is about, after all, and the message of the song, too. So, yeah, it's a success already for me. Awesome. Vani, on the favor of the Netherlands? Yes. Um, this is actually what Eurovision is about, in my opinion. The Netherlands song. The last song is what Eurovision should be about. Uh, so many places mentioned. Uh, I think there is there's another a, a very big possibility for win the semi final, as I said before. And uh, yeah, I can't say anything else because it's also closing the show. It's even better uh, than it already was. Like there was no chance Netherlands was going to fail, but now I think they're going for the win of the semi final. And maybe even in the televoting final, actually. I don't yeah, know. Could be, could be. This is he's the performer, like everything is perfect there for me. All right, we have only two sports in the secured list of the three of us. And the next one, again in a very random order, is Austria. Uh, George, why do you think Austria is in? Well, the Austria song has something that's needed in Eurovision songs. It's that 80s addictive repeated beat that makes you go dancing uh, like mad. Uh, we Will Rave is successful in that part. It has gained attention from the fans. And Kaleen is really charismatic and has an experience on stage with it standing rehearsals. She's also experienced in staging. And I think it will have her own flavor in it, which is always amazing uh, when an artist uh, is working on their own staging, like um, like Notet did with Belgium, or even uh, uh, who was uh, Senec, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, but I also think that Austria is going to be in uh, the last places of the top 10. We will see how this is acting on stage. Interesting. Vani, what do you think about Austria? Well, uh, I think actually the, the rhythm of the song is too catchy to stay in the semis. So I do think that people will actually appreciate that. Uh, I see some uh, people, I see the people that voted for Belgium last year, that they could vote for Austria this year because they have some retro vibe, both of them. Well, mm -hmm. I like this year Austria much more, but <laughs> still. Um, I also think she's like very talented, charismatic, Maybe not the best of the best vocal, but still very nice uh, energy. And I think she's going to sell that song 
So yeah, I don't see any reason why Austria should not be in the finals. They are definitely in. Mm -hmm. So I quite agree with both of you. Uh, I think it won't like win the semi or something close to that because there are simply stronger contenders, let's say, at least based on uh, voting appeal. The only thing with that might be like confusing for me is actually the vocals because yeah, it has it all. There's the, the rhythm, the melody, the vibes, the, even the staging. Like we have seen the, her audition in the Austrian internal selection probably from the leakages, right? Uh, with the four dancers or whatever. So I believe they will try to follow this concept but much bigger on the bigger stage. Also, Colleen has some experience as stage director. She's worked for in Eurovision and Junior Eurovision. So I like um, rely on her stage and desire and concepts to be included in her own staging. Um, yeah, and also we'll get a lot of dancing. I just hope she won't dance too much so singing will be almost impossible. But I want to, to believe it will be considered. So at the moment I will mark it as a qualifier. But yeah, I want to, to put a disclaimer here. I think this is one of the qualifiers who has... A tiny, 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 but tiny again, flop uh, potential just because of the vocals. So let's see. I, I don't think it will be the Pia Maria case, but still it will be something difficult to perform. George, please. Yeah, may I add, I made a mistake. It was Gustav that had uh, his own ideas in the staging, not Senek. Sorry, everyone. Yeah, but it's, it was still with Belgium. Yeah, Senek, I think... Uh, Regrets about her staging, if you ask me. <laughs> yes, yes, that's why I corrected. Yeah. All right, we have only one last spot that we all agree about, and this is Georgia. And this is news, right? Because if Georgia make it to the final, it will be after final, right? The last qualification was in Sweden, but 2016. So a lot of time, a lot of acts we have passed through. George, why do you think Georgia is in? Well, I have seen um, Firefighter being um, a song that divided the fans at first, uh, but it also is a grower. And also, Nucha is a great performer. He can dance, he can move. Um, also, the confidence he has on her vocals is amazing. And she can really stand out as the surprise bop of the year. Also, the team she has with her is really professional. They know what to do. And she also, you know, can sing and dance at the same time, which says a lot about an artist. So, yeah, I think it will do really well mm -hmm. at the end of the day, especially in the semifinal, at least. Right. Vani. Yeah. Uh, so, I think uh, she is going to be the surprise as you said george earlier this is going to be the bob of the year i guess after the performances well austria is good cyprus might be good malta okay luxembourg but i think georgia stands out because nucha is a more complete artist and she can sell a show better and she's i do think yeah i think this will be the bob of the year not just qualify but do well in the final if, even in the jury part, it can do well, I think. Um, because this is just... Uh, okay, maybe it's not the best song lyrically-wise, but I don't think people really care about that. Especially when it comes to a bop. Like, if it's a slower song, they will care. But I think the visual, the dancers, the singer herself will be a bomb because Nucha... Let's face it, I think she'll get the male votes uh, in the semifinal as well. And probably some females will vote for the dancers as well. So I guess it will be like a very hot entry for the semifinal. And I don't think it has a chance to be out. And I really hope Georgia finally goes to the final because they deserve it. Mm -hmm. So I'm joining like on the wishes that Georgia final will be in the final, like even for the diversity, you know, it's really, it's boring to see same countries out of the final, but of course you should be based on the quality of songs. But yeah, how I want to sum it up that I really feel that this year they have tried, 
but tried for real, not only just to say they tried. Uh, Nuta is a powerhouse to give, both vocally and on movement, etc. And what, what I'm afraid of is that sometimes those great, great vocals are the ones to be borderline non-qualifiers, just because, I don't know, people neglect the, the idea that also this is one of the main components to be vote, as, as far as I see it. Again, song is very important, but also good vocalist. I'm sure it's going to be kind of a, a very strong and, let's say, fuego-oriented in the, in the sense that there is a fire, right? Firefighter uh, performance, a lot of sexy dancers, as you said here. Yeah. So I think it will help it really to be pushed through. A running order is not perfect, but it comes after a ballad and after San Marino as well, which is rock, it's a different one. And thereafter we have Belgium, which is kind of a mid-tempo ballad. So I think it will help her. However, I just want to say that I'm, I think that it won't score that high in the semi. So I think that if Georgia qualifies, I think it will be from spot number seven, eight, nine, something like that. Not, not the very high ones, because it's a very strong semifinal. All right, so that is for the C, for the eight sorry qualifiers we've all agree about. Now let's go to the very negative side, unfortunately, because there are four songs that none of us predicted as qualifiers. It hurts, but let's review them quickly. So the first one, again, in a random order, is Latvia. So for me, it's really uh, something painful to confess because Latvia is in my top 10. Here is my confess. But... I don't know, I just feel that the hype is not that real at the moment, at least at the, at the fans bubble. And I I think like that, again, having semifinal without jewelry is actually what might be the formula for such acts like Hollow to be stayed out of the semi in the final. Uh, because with jewelry, probably it would have been pushed for even as a borderline qualifier. Dons is a great performer and the song for me is really meaningful and exciting. But yeah, I don't know. I feel like his allocation also hurts him. And uh, this first and second of all, we all know that Latvia has Latvia, sorry, has struggled in recent years, even with strongest songs, by the way. So it might be even problematic that here. However, I think that as a package, he's a really great performer. And if one of the very, let's say, uh, contenders or those in the list of certain qualifiers will screw up. Maybe Latvia can do kind of a strategy here to steal the spot. So this is a potential, but I think it most likely won't happen. Uh, George, why do you think Latvia is out? You said everything I wanted to say, honestly. It really pains me that I say they're probably going to be out. Uh, but I want to add that Dance is one of actually the best male vocalists this year. And it will be really sad if they don't qualify because Latvia deserves it as much as Georgia or Ireland, as we said in the previous video. And, you know, maybe it might get still a spot if one of the favorites scrap. Yeah, I can see that happening, actually. Like, if the performance is even better, why not? Yeah, sorry, just wanted to add also that I don't really appreciate the staging effort in Supernova. So at least if they want to... Like to upgrade somehow the chances, at least work about it. I have no actually good idea how to reflect it because you know the, the, the video clip will be almost impossible to retrieve on staging, but it couldn't be just here with a box and lights. I'm, I'm sorry, we need much more. Uh, Vani, why do you think Latvia is out? Yeah, uh, first of all, on the contrary of you two, I won't mind Latvia out of the semi final, <laughs> out of the final, uh, because it's not really among my favorites. Uh, I think just it just develops too predictably uh, for the average year to give attention to it. Like they have Armenia, which is also a bit of questioner for me, question mark for me, but it's definitely more uh, to watch than Latvia. And then we have uh, Spain appearing with uh, the another very weird song. And I think Latvia just is there it, it's one of the songs that just exist there for me for me personally and i do think that for many people as well because probably we've got bored of those safe slow probably radio friendly songs like uh, rock stars for example on um, two years ago from germany or even the german song this year i think this is going to a similar direction musically 
uh, I think Latvia should try more and qualify next year. Oh, I hope so. I really want Latvia in the final. All right. So this was first of four, actually, unfortunate acts that we think won't qualify. Second one, again, running order is Albania with Titan. So I think this is really... Like, first of all, I really like Bessa. I think I have already told it, but I want to, to confirm it again. She's a great person, great artist, and she has great personality. But I think, like, translating this act, this song, sorry, from Albanian to English, and also changing the production, making it more radio-friendly, but also safer, no really rapping here, no something sassy. I, and also being allocated in spot number two, which is almost dead. Um yeah, I think all of this together puts it in a very low priority. What I think that Albania won't be last in the semi because they will get some diaspora votes. I can see, I don't know, Italy and Georgia vote for them and all the diaspora from other countries, even the rest of the world. And yeah, it's quite friendly for them as a voting pattern, but I think it, still it won't be enough in order to sneak into the top 10. Uh, Vanni, why do you think Albania is out? Because that song is actually too dated. And I also think that uh, changing the song was a crime because I think Zembrandor would honestly go to the finals. It had something different. It had some spice. It had something to pay, to give attention to. Uh, now I don't think, I, I think we just have another pop song in the semifinal. Won't really stand out. Doesn't really give off anything Albanian. Uh, from the Albanian culture and also it's followed by Greece which is full of culture cultural elements and I think it will make it disappear uh, let's say from the semi-final and although I, I can see as well getting some points due to diaspora but not really something magnificent so it qualifies yeah uh, George why do you think Albania is out well personally I think that uh, she really did a bad decision changing the song that much. It lost its identity, which is important in the song. The song had identity, especially the rap part in Albania was fantastic. Um, but also, it's it's between two uplifting songs, one in the pop way and one in the more traditional cultural way. And... It won't stand out. It will. It it will be a bit forgotten, outshine, outshone. I don't know, the right world. But I also think Bessa knows how to perform, and if she misses out the final, it will be closely, like twelfth to thirteenth place. Yeah. So yeah. And as you said, they have the diaspora on their side, even so, they can sneak a little, a lot of points. Small, but it will be enough to not finish bottom three of the semi. Yeah, I can see the same as you. All right, we still have two countries to discuss, which none of us think going to qualify. And the next one is San Marino. Uh, George, why do you think San Marino is out? Well, San Marino picked a rock song for a uh, third year in a row. Um, but it's not a good rock song, I think. Megara have the attitude on stage, their power on stage, but the song is, um, how to say it, under their standards, in my opinion. Like, they have better songs, especially last year, Benny Dorms and Arcadia will do much better. Um, and also, San Marino doesn't have friendly votes, except Italy and Spain. Other than that, I can't see any other country voting for this. It for some people it will be too raw, and also it's in a half that almost all of it is a qualifier. So somebody should stay out, and that's one of the songs, unfortunately. Bunny, why do you think San Marino is out? Yeah, although I initially thought this could be a shock qualifier. Uh... When I reevaluate this uh, that semi final, I just can't see it fitting in the ten countries that could qualify. 
I, I don't think it'll do bad. It'll be one of the best recent San Marini's semifinal uh, non-qualifications. I mean, like 12th, I could imagine, and in that place, because they have the attitude, they want to be unnoticed, definitely, because unlike last year, which was definitely unnoticed. And... Well, but my main issue here, actually, is the vocals of this girl. They are very shaky. One of the most shaky this year, I think. And I I don't know, like, in Arcadia's performance, she was better, definitely. I don't know what happened here. Maybe they didn't feel that song that much. I don't know, because I personally love that song, and I don't want it to fail. And I also have a soft spot for San Marino General because it's the smallest state of the of this contest. Uh, but um, yeah, I don't think this is going to eventually go to the final unless they do something very good with the staging, which I doubt, but let's see. Anything is possible. I still have a slight hope for them. Yes, actually, I think as well, it's out of course. Um, I just think there are better songs in that semi. For example, No Way, which is another kind of a rock metal song, would blow it up, unfortunately. Um, yeah, Belgium, not far from that. Georgia, not far actually following that one. So I believe this sequence of songs will make the, the average listener or viewer to forget about that one. Uh, I think they won't do something very special. Not Like, I think it will be almost the same as Una Voce per San Marino. And Kenzie's voice isn't that good, I agree. She, it's shaky, but she also sometimes too aggressive with no reason. So, yeah, I think that, I don't know, I don't see they just well. And I'm going to say something very weird, which is against all everything I believe in this world. But what I paid attention is that female rock singers tend not to do well at Eurovision. And yeah, we have Vanilla Ninja from Switzerland, but it was a lot of years ago. But yeah, so I think it will join this unfortunately have negative club all right so from one rock song to another pop rock song because unfortunately the last country we've all agreed is out and actually for me it's really sad to say so but it's czechia uh Aiko. so i think that the national final performance wasn't good and she has one that even though it wasn't good so congrats for that the revamp is great i must say since the revamp the songs had grown on me a lot it jumped into to my it's out of my top 10, but not far from there. It's like my 14th play, something like that, which is good. Um, I'm just not sure about the delivery of live vocals. Also in pre-parties, it was a problem sometimes. Staging should be revised, but I'm not sure what they're going to bring. They talked about something like the the five levels of when you're mourning, like in psychology theory. So, but maybe it's only for the pre-parties. I'm not sure. So we really have to see. I just... Pray to God that you won't do this uh, kind of nasty uh, dancing because it doesn't fit the song a lot. And it also downgrades her vocals. So at the moment, I don't see it qualifying. Also, it comes after Switzerland and France and after we have Austria. I believe all those acts have the power to to make the sound of the Delavoids. Well, France is not a contender, but, you know, it's an interval act. But yeah, future is not that bright for Czechia this year. But we'll see. Uh, personally, I wanted to qualify, by the way. Uh, Vanny, why do you think JK is out? Yeah, I agree with you. And I also want this to be in the finals because it's a very nice song. But uh, I can see like check-in entry being very overlooked by people uh, because it's there will, be a, there will be a portion of fans who vote for it because it's like an, a pop rock song, more like 2000s vibe. And personally, I love that genre, if you ask me. Um, I don't know. I think that song just will be a bit unnoticed. Uh, I want her to be in the final, definitely, because she deserves. She's been very evolving uh, lately. And... I do think this is a big improvement from what we saw in December, for example. Uh, but still, I don't think the song is too original, let's say, to stand out. But okay, if she manages to save this with a with a perfect staging, 
I would be more than welcome to see this in the final, but for now it's a no. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, check yeah. I think Ico is one of the people, one of the representatives that are evolving actually. Um, the performance in December was a mess, but she delivered in Barcelona and in Madrid. Um, but she has still the road ahead of her. Also, I find the song um to be from the 2000s early, like it's inspired from Avril Lavigne, definitely, and other pop artists. But I think Czechia won't stand out between uh, the Interval Act of France and also after Switzerland, because it's something that has been um been performed as a genre in Eurovision Song Contest. And this year is unpredictable and also the second semifinal is already too hard and yeah that's all all right so now we move on to countries that two of us think will qualify while the third of us think won't qualify and the first country in that club is belgium uh, so who here thinks belgium gonna qualify Me? all right Vani, why do you think Belgium is out? It's not an easy decision, of course. Uh, but honestly, I don't know. I think there must be a fun wonk, as they say, <laughs> even to reach out of the final. Just like I think his journey is reminding me of Romania's entry three years ago, Amnesia. Uh, a perfect song, almost perfect song, sung by a questionably uh, talented artist. Um, and I do think that in Misty's case, uh, the song is gen it's probably, it's generally saying like before the, the last minute is only before the party is over, over and over again. And I think people will get bored of that. And even, especially if the recap chosen is by this, part of the song because it's the strongest one. But I still think people will get bored of this. And I don't know. I don't think that all songs from 11 to 16 can qualify. And since the rest are qualified, I do think that Belgium could be a victim of some bad circumstances and eventually be the, sh the biggest shock non-qualification this year. Well, I actually can see it happening as well, even though I predict it as a qualifier. My main problem here is not the song. The song I really believe is one of the really strong, at least for my taste. But I don't know, pers personally, as far as I have got the impression so far, the live performances aren't that good. He tends to shout too much and also to shake his body and legs and spread his hand or whatever too dramatically. And the song should be built on emotions as far as I see it. And for me, just squeeze the emotions and... I don't know, convert it to just another song in the mix, which is not the case. So I think they would, the team behind it should, behind Musti should work really hard because it has the potential to do very well, but only if it's staged and performed rightfully. Afterwards, yeah, I can see what you said happening and it will be interesting because that means that probably another country will sneak in. Personally, I really want Belgium to be in. It's in my top 10 of that year. But again, it's not a trivial as many people think, or at least based on the arts. Uh, George, why do you think Belgium is most likely in? Well, first of all, I think the last minute is one of the best build-ups in the Eurovision Song Contest. Um, it's really building up great before the bridge and the ex explosion comes later. And it's repetitive, yeah, but it's stuck in your head. It can bring emotions out of you, this song. And I think it will be appreciated no matter what. Like uh, Belgium didn't have the best staging in 2017, but they still finished top five. Maybe it will be the case again. I don't know. I cannot think a non-qualifying, really. Also, yeah, the pre-parties can give you a taste, but also they can mislead you. The perfect example was Roxanne, as was mentioned. She was amazing in the pre-parties in the live videos because we had on tape videos. And she still could not deliver. Maybe he should be less over dramatic with his moves. He should be more um, 
calm on stage and bring the right emotions. Yeah, I think it should be more static. That's it. Like clearly. Yeah, it's he's too theatrical for his own good. He should be he should tone it down. Yeah, <laughs> that's the right definition. All right, there is another country which two of us agree gonna qualify while the third of us not. And this is Armenia. So please raise your hand, everyone who thinks Armenia is in. All right, Vani, again, you are the bad boy. <laughs> I am making the difference. Um, <laughs> Please explain why do you think Armenia know, this is could, out. This could, oh, this could also be a borderline as well. I can imagine it places 10 or 11 or even 9 or even 12. Mm -hmm. uh, well, actually, I can't... This is too much for your vision, I think. It's a definite culture showcase, but Greece did that earlier. So Armenia is a very similar song to Greek. Uh, I think in terms of culture and showcase and etc. etc. Uh, also, I do think that those they have nice chemistry. Okay, good songs. Uh, but this is messy all around. I can't imagine a proper staging for this. I can also imagine this like we saw Blanca Paloma last year being dead last. Although people expected her in the televotes, although people expect her to be in the top 10. So I think we have a similar case here in that song. Too much shouts, too much ah, la, 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 la. And I don't know. Yeah. Like it's Fulen or Ea, Ea and then it's, it will be this song for this year, mm, I think. Actually, actually, interesting what you're saying now. It's really a nice comp comparison. Nice but sad. Um, yeah, I most likely think it's in. But I must say, yeah, it's, there is something messy in its merits. Like, in, it's very basic. The, the song is messy. Some people might like it, some don't. Um, I want to believe that, yeah, some people will vote for that one because they like this kind of uplifting and ethnic vibes. I agree that Greece da has done it much better this semi, of course. But maybe, you know, some people can vote for that one as well. It closed the first half, which is a quite a nice position. And also it comes after Denmark, which is kind of a, another radio-friendly song, if you ask me. So for sure it can be shed on more uh, special light on that one. But yeah, I think the key here will be the staging, because if staging will be just running over again and again the stage, it, it doesn't going to work, let me tell you. But at the moment, as I see it and judge it based on studio and pre parties, etc., I think I see many people liking that one. So I think it will qualify. Not scoring that high, though, but still. Uh, George, please, explain why do you think Armenia is in. Well, the song might be too ethnic for some people. I can get that. But also, it brings out Armenia. The culture of Armenia. It's You wouldn't even need to see the country to know that it's Armenia. It's the same with Greece, actually. It's just that's not so much in the modern nude like Greece is um, but also they have the strongest diaspora in Europe I think so I um, think Armenia will pull through if the staging is not good it might flop in the finals though I cannot sing sing out also Jacqueline can sing yeah she not lie sure. about her vocal power is wow, it's amazing. And also I like the the flute. The she's playing the flute, right? Her uh, her companion on stage. Yeah, the French guy, yeah. Louis. Yeah, it's amazing. It will stand out too as well. Yeah, to be honest, I think I mean I for some reason I don't know why, but I think that as people had really a high hype about uh, Moldova 2022 I think the same can happen here however yeah. I think it would succeed less even with the televote but something similar right? because people want some some song you know to forget about the daily uh, troubles <laughs> and dive in and I think th this one can be a contender all mm -hmm. right so those were two songs that only two of us agreed on and now we have another category we have another two songs and the last one to cover uh, which are the ones that only one of us, and you can guess already who, think will qualify. So the first one in the sequence is Malta. Right, so who thinks Malta going to qualify? Right, Vani, please start by explaining why do you think Malta is in? 
Well, it follows the female Bob uh, classical recipe, and this one barely ever fails to qualify in Eurovision. Uh, although it's a small country, it's Malta. Well, I think she's moving, she's dancing, she's singing, she's, she's having a uh, Bob uh, energy. Uh, this is going everywhere, even the blindfold uh, flip, uh, if they keep it for Eurovision. Uh, I don't know, I think it's a, a very good game for Malta this year. Rare occasion for Malta, if you ask me. Uh, and I don't see why it's so overlooked. Like, I think it's something that Televote could actually vote for. Like, not for to win, of course, the semifinal, uh, but like, a borderline qualification, why not? Because I see this been very overlooked and I'm really impressed by how overlooked this is. Uh, and it's also a great opener. Like if it wasn't a song number three or four, I would probably tell it's going to stay out, but it's a great opener, I think. Very energetic. So yeah, that's my opinion. Mm -hmm. And I really hope it happens by the way as well. I hope as well, Sarah Borinci is really nice and tries a lot and, I don't know, her voice is good. But yeah, I must say that in some cases in the prep parties, it was really hard for her to to hit the notes as far as I'm concerned. And also, I don't know why, but it looks like people see this one is not the most original act and it might hurt the chances to be to get votes. I see a lot of people saying that statement, that that's why I'm quoting myself, not my personal statement though. Um. Also, I think that, yeah, usually opening semifinal is good, but I'm afraid that a lot of contenders will come after it. So the first song might be forgotten. For example, Greece, it's number three, uh, Switzerland, number four. Uh, I don't know, even the, 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 the ones who close the sequence, like Israel, Norway, and the Netherlands. So I think people at the end of the day will say, oh, wow, Malta, have they performed? Ah, okay, they opened the show, right? So that's what I'm afraid will, will happen. Again, not because it's not a good song, just because other might defeat it. But let's see, it has a chance because she's going to work with dancers and it, it will be uh, the, the girly bop of the year, at least on staging concepts. Uh, George, why do you think Malta is out? Well, uh, I think that Malta is not going to qualify because of two, for two reasons. First of all, they don't have televote appeal. Uh, in the contest, and I, I really don't know why, because some songs really had that appeal. They always struggle with the televoting, and also, it looks a bit unoriginal. It's a, of course, girl boobs can be amazing and get attention, but especially the choreo, it's like a copy of slow mo mixed with unicorn and fuego, which is not appreciated in Eurovision that much, not even some national finals. And yeah, of course, Sarah is an amazing vocalist most of the times, and she can dance too, okay, but I cannot see standing out and people saying, oh, I will vote for Malta instead of Norway or if and to compare Georgia, for example. Yeah, I agree. All right, there is only one country we haven't spoken about. Yeah, Vani, it's your turn again. Why do you think Denmark going to qualify? Well, uh, I think I might say that before, but I this song really reminds me of Lorene's tattoo, but in a in a more um in a more amateurish way. <laughs> but still, uh, it, I think it's enough to qualify because this is a very catchy tune, in my opinion. Not a, and I think generally it has a rhythm that stays in your mind. Also, the sand sand part, uh. She also has emotion through her voice. And no, not all ballads can stay in the semifinal. Not all more slower or uh, predictable songs can stay in the semifinal. And well, okay, maybe Belgium could, could qualify instead of Denmark. But for now, I say Denmark because I think she's more uh, ready for the stage. And she's less, uh, yeah, she's more pure let's say. And yeah, I, I can say like, it's a definite qualifier, of course. And we've seen how Denmark struggles to qualify lately. And I'm really sad for that. But I think it's 
finally time to see Denmark in the finals because they try this year. Yeah, so I agree that out of the recent attempts, this one is the one of the strongest, at, at least for sure better than last year, I'm sorry. Um, I don't know. I'm still not convinced by her as a performer, both in the national final and in, even in the acoustic version she has recorded. She missed some of the notes. And I think this kind of a song, it's a song that the, the vocal delivery is crucial. Unlike, for example, I don't know, uh, Finland or Croatia or the Netherlands this year, which has different genre. This one is still the, the you know, the genre that the vocalist has to deliver. Also staging, we have seen barely nothing. I'm sorry. Like you're standing on the platform, there are a lot of lights, etc. I'm not sure it's going to be enough. And last but not least, I think running order is not that good at all. She's after Austria, for example, which is going to stand out because it's a very catchy song. And there are many afterwards, which, well, some people like, some not, but it, it will be one, you know, to remember. So, yeah, I, I just think she will be sacrificed of the running order, to be honest. I can see her coming really close. For me, it's between Denmark and Aust Estonia, by the way. I think one of them will end in the lower uh, qualifier spots while the other will be uh, kept out, unless another country screwed up and then both of them can qualify. But the moment, is, that's the way I see it. George, why do you think Denmark is out? Well, Denmark decided to play too safe in a year. People dare to try things, uh, which is a bit unlikely on their part. But also, they're going to the routine of picking up rejects from other countries. So I don't like the term much, but it's like an amateurish version of tattoo, like Manny said. And I don't like when they do that, especially exactly the following year. And also, it's just there, especially the performance in the platform. Like, have something happen, please. Also, after Austria, which is one of the bobs this year, and before Armenia, which is, yes, too crazy, but it will have a lot of support. And Denmark is just in the middle. So I think it lacks the standing uh, out of the song. That's needed this year, definitely it's needed this year. All right, so let's finalize this long video with a short uh, summary of us on the running order. So please tell us guys, who do you think got the most damage or most hurt by the running order? And who are the biggest winner of the running order? Uh, Vani, may you start, please? Uh, who had... Uh... Actually, I do think that uh, running order really didn't really... I think, okay, uh, Czechia by far is the most uh, damaged from the running order, I think. Between so many favorites, I don't know why they butchered Czechia that much, because... Like, I can't understand, especially a country which finished in the top 10 last year. Why would they do this this year? Uh, and I think the most favorite is definitely uh, Israel. Mm. I think it could have been in another position, uh, like 9 or 10, because it's a ballot. But, well, 14, okay, that's perfect. It's almost perfect. And I also think, uh, maybe in a popular opinion, I do think that Georgia was also favored by the order. Because it's the all it's Latvia, San Marino. Uh, I think those songs are too probably left unnoticed. So Georgia will do a bomb there, and I think they have a good run in order, as well as Israel. Yeah, mm -hmm. nice, George. What do you think? Well, I think Albania is damaged a lot. I will put a disclaimer of a joke here. EBU should really stop doing this to Albania. Every time it's a death spot in the final or the semi-final. And also a damaged position is that of Denmark, in my opinion, between two really standing out songs. Um, also, I would like to add, uh, yeah, San Marino is it damaged before Georgia. And after Don's, yeah, because he is a great performer. Uh, 
even though it's not one of the favorites to qualify. Also, the biggest uh, winner of this is definitely the Netherlands and Norway, because they are in the spots with the most qualification rate. And also a good spot is, yeah, that of Georgia, like Vanny said. They also have the same number, if I'm not wrong, like last year. 11. Yeah, uh, I hope okay. this year it's yeah. lucky, no, not like Iru. No, Iru was 10 and Slovenia was 11, if I'm not wrong. But yeah, yeah. I don't remember. Right? Somebody tell us in the comments. Um, yeah, but the biggest gainer overall is Netherlands and the biggest loser is Albania for me. So actually, I agree with the combination of both of you. I think uh, Albania got a very bad position because it's not only spot number two, but it's also followed by a very two biggest favorites of that semi, or at least of the first half, which is Greece and Switzerland. So it will be blown. I'm sorry. I see no no chance for that one. Uh, Czechia, yeah, it's not that perfect, but I don't know. They're, they're after Greece. So, uh, sorry, they're after France, which doesn't really compete. And it's a ballad, so it's a, something different. Denmark, very bad spot between two bold songs, Austria and Armenia. I think Norway and the Netherlands, that's right, are the biggest earners uh, closing that semi. But also, yeah, Norway is a song that should leave impressions. So I think that having only one song after them will help them to stand out. And closing the semifinal with kind of a party like the Netherlands, I think, should benefit. Also, unpopular opinion, but I think Estonia got not a good position. It's not one of the negative ones but it's not that good because it's surrounded by a lot of favorites like it has belgium let's say he will do good i don't know it has estonia and then you has israel uh, sorry you have italy. italy actually israel and then the netherlands no way and then the netherlands i'm not sure it's a good sign for them but let's see yeah all right so those were our opinions and predictions about semi-final two which will be held on the 9th of may thursday Let's wish good luck to all 16 competing arts. Guys, tell us in the comments below, what do you think about the songs in semifinal two? Do you agree with our predictions? Do you think differently? Who will be the surprising non-qualifier? Will be a shocking qualifier? Don't forget to subscribe to our channel right below. Give us a like. And you can visit us on ecb.com, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and basically everywhere. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.